um, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. My name is George. I'm a mentor on the GATS program. Uh, it's my um, video, YouTube video podcast, um, uh, YouTube videos on how to uh, carry out the quick labs uh, that are associated with the program. Uh, in today's uh, quick labs uh, session, we'll be looking at uh, uh, um, 13 in the series, working with Kubernetes, Indian secrets, and conflict maps. Of course, as we know, secrets are information that you want to keep. Keep secrets and config maps are environmental variables. Of course, secrets are the same, only that they are not meant to be seen by everyone. Uh, but the config map uh, values and um, entries can be seen by everyone. That is not there. Basically, the same thing, but um, one is used for storing and encrypting data. The other one is just uh, to pass on environmental variables. And these are uh, placed at the uh, cluster level and they pass that information on to the pods that are associated with the, whichever cluster that you're working with. Okay, so first of all, in this lab, first thing you need to do is actually read through. Um, sometimes it's basically the same, but sometimes some things change. Um, overview, giving you a rundown of what you were trying to learn today, objectives, what we should be getting done today. Create secrets by using the kubectl command and the manifest file. Uh, create config maps using kubectl command and manifest files again. Consume secrets in containers by using environmental variables or mounted volumes. Consume config maps in containers by using uh, environmental variables or mounted volumes, okay? All right, so lab setup. Of course, we need to use the cognito window and the lab will last for just one hour. And of course, you want to start to click that button. So it's, it's, a pretty, it's, it's a pretty easy lab. And then of course, you check your progress here. Uh, if you have issues, you run a step and it doesn't uh, update the score. Uh, you click on this and it will run it again. And if there's an issue with the step, you know, maybe something you missed, uh, a pop-up would tell you that and you go back and check what you've done. Okay, let's quickly click on this while that is starting up. Of course, we've been warned, you use another account other than the one shown here, you might incur charges. Of course, let's look through, of course, when we're getting, we're supposed to activate our cloud shell. Do we need to set any special environmental variables? None whatsoever, so we'll get to task one. Let's click on that to open it in another tab. Click on this to copy the, the, the email that was given to us by Quick Labs. Click on this, all right. And then we accept this and then wait a few minutes. And then of course, like I said before, you don't need to update anything. This isn't your email. Let's click on this. All right, to give it a few minutes while it boots up. And of course, when this comes up, we have one more window to attend to before we start. Accept this, you don't need to bother about this other one, and then you agree and continue. Okay, so once this is out of the way, first thing we do, we click on this to activate that. And, um, okay, click on this to continue. Okay, um, let's go back up here. Um, well, usually what I do is I click on this, uh, those things I, those um, menu items I know that I often use. So I click on that pin that will place them at the top here. So that's easy for me to find. So let's go back to instruction. It says, this task you authenticates containers with Google Cloud Platform in order to access GPC services. GCP services. You set up a cloud pop subtopic and subscription. Try to access the cloud pop subtopic from a container running in GKE and see that the access request fails. Of course, based on uh, 
uh, authentication issues to properly access the pop up topic you create a service account with credentials and pass those credentials through to kubernetes uh, secrets okay so you create a service account that has access to um, that's authorized to access a pop up topic uh, and then you pass that uh, service account to the Kubernetes uh, cluster using Kubernetes secrets. And of course, pods can now make the same request and uh, access that secret and use it to authenticate themselves. Okay, so here we're supposed to go to the IAM service account and create a service account. Uh, a service account name, you type no permissions. Okay, let's copy that and then click create and then click continue and then click done. Okay, so let's quickly do that. So I am is here, and they said we're supposed to go to service accounts. If I'm not mistaken, let's click back here. Okay, create service account. Okay, that's coming up. Click at the top here, and then you give it a name. The name has been specified. Create, create. Is there any other special thing we need to do? No. So let's create this. Uh huh. Then you add a row. Okay, no role was assigned to that service account. Okay, so click continue and click done. All right, so that service account is up and running. You can see it here. Okay, service account at project ID dot IAM dot G uh, service account. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Let me return this here. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next thing is create a GKE cluster. When you create this cluster, you will specify these seven accounts you created earlier. To illustrate the need for service accounts with proper permissions, that service account has no permissions to any other GCP service and therefore will be unable to connect to the uh, cloud pop sub test application you will later deploy. Okay, so let's create these environmental variables, my zone and my cluster. Click on that. Go to our shell, I'll put that in, and that's been created. Then we set up auto completion for our cloud commands. So it's easy to type and hit the tab twice, and it will be presented with options that we can choose from. Okay, in Cloud Shell, type the following command to set the environmental variable for the service account where this uh, placeholder here, my service account email, is the email of the uh, service account that you created earlier. Okay, so if you click on this, uh, it also copies a new line character. So when you paste it in your shell, it runs it immediately, but that's not what we want to do. So we will manually uh, select that here, paste that in here. And of course, let's look for the email of that service account we created. Uh, okay, that's email. Uh, let me copy it, copy that come here, get rid of, uh, I, I need to make this a bit bigger. Um, okay, let me scroll up a bit. Um, let me make this bigger a bit. Okay, all right, I think that's, that's about enough. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so when you do that, there's a bit of a change in where your cursor actually is. Uh, if you can see that, and then, of course, uh, let's paste that in here, and then hit enter. Okay, that's that's been set. Go back here. It says, um, okay, example of what we're supposed to have done. So we've done this. Now in the cloud, shell type the following command to create a Kubernetes cluster, and then using that service account we had set up. Okay. So that passes the permissions, if any, to the cluster we're creating. And in this case, there are no permissions, so that cluster would find it a difficult to carry out some tasks. Configure access to your cluster for kubectl. Okay, so we are setting a context for our uh, gcloud command so that any uh, commands we lock run against the cluster will be uh, run against this cluster we created here. So if this command is needed, if you don't set it, then uh, the cloud doesn't know which okay all right sorry about that let me 
pause this while this sets up. Okay, so um, our class has been created. So let's quickly look at the next steps. Um, okay, so we are creating more environmental variables. Uh, this time, my sub and my sub underscore uh, subscription. So let's quickly click on that. Paste that in here. Oh, what did I do? I think I, I clicked on something that I shouldn't have. Okay, so let me clear the screen. Okay. All right, so paste that in here and hit enter. Okay, that's been. And then we, we create a topic, pops up topic, and then we create a subscription to that particular topic. Okay, so uh -huh, we created a topic and then we created a subscription to that topic. Now we're going to deploy an application to our cluster and this is the, uh, the manifest file for that deployment. Um, labels, of course, is this. Containers is an application already uh, in the Google Container Registry. Um, then we would access, we will have access to this file uh, in this repository. So let's clone that, uh, click that paste that here okay while that is running we will now change into the directory of course cd uh, appersand forward slash the appersand there stands for home uh, forward slash home forward slash the name of the user in this case student okay so we paste that in here and we have changed you can see we now have this in addition to the one we had previously so we've changed into this directory uh, 13 underscore secrets. Okay, while we're in there, we need to run this command to apply uh, the pops up the YAML to create uh, a deployment. Okay. Okay, so we're going to create a deployment that will be extremely fast. After that, we get the, the pods that go uh, straight with that deployment. Uh, not a deployment, sorry. We'll get the ports that, that were created alongside that uh, command we just ran. Okay, so that's been done. All right, so so we have one pod. Uh, it's not yet ready. It's still coming up. Okay, crash loop back off. So it says, okay, let's run it again. I hope we did something right. It starts one. Uh, why is that doing that? Let's go back and see. Uh, okay. Hmm. That's strange. All right, let's clear the screen. All right, let's check um, kubectl. Oh, sorry, ctl. Tab, tab, and auth. Space, tab, tab. Sorry, tab, tab. And no, that's not what I want to do. I want to check. Okay, config. Okay, config. Tap, tap. All right, so let's view the configuration. Set the configuration. Get clusters. View the configuration. Let's see that one. All right, so. Look through a cluster. All right, user name. Big. All right, time preferences. Oh, okay. I don't know why that is acting up. So let me clear the screen again. Get pods. Oh, there's a problem. There's definitely a problem. Definitely. So let's go back to our crash loop. Okay. What zone was that? US Central A and three ports. Maybe we have any issues. See what we do. Launch. Let's go to let's go to a cluster. Open it in a new tab. Okay, 
okay let's see what the problem is okay what is crashing okay the pod seems to be in order okay uh, everything is fine let's click this they're all running so what's going on the storage uh, it would help check the workloads does not have minimum availability okay so there's a problem with the uh it's not coming up the pods okay let's let's refresh this okay, you know what let's just delete this and see what happens okay let's delete this terminating okay let's go back to our instructions here yeah, we created a course let's run this one again it just okay let's run this one again and let's see if we'll have an error in the output okay so paste that one paste it in there okay that's been done let's check the workloads uh it should be gone by now Okay, let's let's go back and run that. Uh, this has been done. Okay, let's clone this, and we are in that directory. And of course, and it said we should apply. Click on that and hit enter. Okay, so created and let's see if we will still get uh, a pod to the label app pops up okay oh it's crashing maybe that's expected yeah i think that's expected wait for a minute or two the application is starting but it will not succeed okay it's expected uh of course it doesn't have permission to run that application that application is trying to read from the pops up topic and the service account associated with it doesn't have the permission to do so that's why it's crashing okay so um okay it keeps restarting okay okay to inspect we will say logs of l uh l there is for label so let's do that okay Okay. All right. So permission denied. Status permission denied. Okay. So that's at the bottom there. User does not have to perform this action. So that's the reason for that. Okay. Create a service. Uh, create a serv create service account uh, credentials. You will now create a new service account and grant it access to the pops up subscription. Okay. So we go back there. Create this service account this time we'll call it pops up app okay so let's do that quickly from here let me do that from here because it's clearer from here okay service account you can as well type here and type service account and it will quickly give you options to do that so let's create this all right put that in here all right Great. Okay, that's the name of service account. Now, what permissions are we giving? So, pops up subscriber. Okay, so we click here. Pops up. Should be P. Should be down. Let's go down. Uh, P somewhere here. MLP. Pops up subscriber. There you are. And then continue. Okay, so why that is doing why that is coming up let's look at continue and then click create key select JSON as the type then click create uh, this JSON key will contain the credentials for that particular service account and we'll be using that to authenticate or create a Kubernetes secret that will be passed on to uh, the Kubernetes
this cluster. Okay, so where are we? Uh, still coming up. Okay, I'll pause this and then when it's done, we will come back. All right, so it's done. So let's click on this. Okay, so that has been created. The name of the service account was, um, let's go back up. Let's see, pops up app. Okay, so let's look for the service account here. Um, the lab says we should create a key directly as uh, part, part of the process, but I think that that's an old lab, so it's, it's kind of different. You actually have to create it first, then go back and create that key. So uh, pops up app, that's it. So um, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so I click on that. I go to the last part, no keys. It says create key, uh, just in format. Click on that. Okay, that key. And of course, it's been downloaded to my system. So I will save that in a temporary spot. The name should, okay, let me call it credential. Okay, credential. Okay. All right, so that's been stored. We close that one. Okay, um, let's go back. Key has been created. Uh huh. Now click on done and all that. Okay, so upload the key credentials. Uh, let's go back here. Um, click on this, and it says upload file. And we come go to this location. Uh, Go to temp folder, credential should be somewhere. Uh, it should be here. There it is. Double click on it and it takes it up from your computer onto GCP. All right, so, oh, sorry. All right, so now that we know, now let's run this command to ascertain that we have actually uploaded that file. Okay, and there's the file there, it's just there. Okay, so now what else? Now we're gonna create a generic secret and pass the credentials to it because this uh, secret will be associated with the current cluster. So let's click here and then let me clear the screen. All right, so, and then we we'll paste that and the secret is created, okay? Now, this command creates a secret name pops up key that has a key.json value um, containing the contents of the private key that you downloaded from GCP console. Now, let's remove that credential file from, remove the credential file from your computer. Uh, All right, so let's hit that. All right, so that's been removed from our, this, our system. Configure the application with the secret. Add a volume to the pod. You now update the deployment to include the following changes. Add a volume to the pod specification. This volume contains the secret. The secret volume is mounted in the application container. The Google application credentials environment available is set to point to the key and the secret volume mount. Okay, the Google application credentials environment variable is automatically recognized by cloud uh, client libraries. In this case, the cloud pops up client for Python. Now, the updated deployment file uh, pops up secret.yaml has been provided for us. Of course, let's go down and see. Okay, so that's the volume secret. Uh, the containers, of course, the volume mounts and environmental variable, the value of other environmental variable, of course, is the path to the, uh, the secret, okay? All right, so of course, we should be in that folder and then we'll now do what? We update our deployment. Of course, this time it should succeed, uh, okay? After configuring is deployed, it's good for the command to display the pods, okay? So we updated our configuration manifest file for the uh, deployment and of course applied it. All right, so you see now it's running. 
one pod, one pod. It starts zero, so it's it's in order now. Okay, so test the uh, test receiving the messages. Now that you've configured the application, publish a message to the pop up topic you just created. Okay, so let's publish one, publish a message, and then see if our Okay, sorry about that. I think I've lost connectivity or thereabout. It's okay, but let's just give it a minute or so. Oh, I just pray it doesn't it doesn't publish more than once. Oh, sorry, that's network. Okay, let me fix it and I'll be back. Okay, we are back. Ah, uh, because I tried pasting it severally, I was uh. I ended up doing two uh, publish, publishing twice to the topic. So uh, we'll see some things. We'll, we'll get to see what we see. Okay, so uh, of course the message is returned. And then we will list the logs. Let's look at the logs. All right. Okay, processing, processing, processed. Okay, so we did it twice. Okay, then let's check out the progress and we'll good to go so okay now we move on to config maps config maps bind configuration files command line arguments environmental variables but numbers and other configuration artifacts to your pod containers and system components at one time config maps enable you to separate your configurations from your pods and components but config maps aren't encrypted making them inappropriate for credential this is the difference between secrets and config maps Secrets are encrypted and are therefore better suited for confidential and or sensitive information. Use the kubectl command to create config maps, okay? Use the kubectl com command to create config maps by following the pattern kubectl, create config map, the name of config map, the data, and adding a flag for from file or from literal. Okay, so the values we've gotten from a file or we fed into the terminal at command time, at uh, at time of issuing the command. So in this case, uh, it's a literal. Okay, so let's let's clear the screen here, and then hit that up. All right, so that's been that's been created to see. We describe a config map, and of course, it tells us. Okay, so data config from literal message hello. So the message is, uh, the key is message and the value of that is hello. Okay, all right. So, okay, so let's create config map, another one. Okay, this time from a file. Okay, name sample.properties. Okay, that's been done. I suspect that file should be in here. Yeah, that's it, sample two dot properties. So files are in there. Okay, so we describe the second config map that was created. All right, all right, so, okay. So we have several values in there. Message two, world, two bar, and uh, okay. Meaning of life is equal to 42. So those, that's the data for that config map. Okay, so use manifest files to create config maps, okay? All right, so let's see an example of a config map. The kind is a config map. The data is up here. This is the key and this is the value. Okay, so let's create that one quickly. Press that in there. All right, so that's been done. Come back here. Describe it again like we described the other ones. Skip, describe command simply looks into it. Okay, so that's that's data all here. All right, so all right, so let's go use environmental variables to consume config maps. Okay, so let's see how this is used. Um, in order to access config maps from outside containers, from inside the containers using environmental variables, the port definition must be updated to include one or more config map reference keys the file pops up um, dash config map.yaml is an updated version of 
uh, the cloud pop-top demo deployment that includes the following additional environment END uh, setting at the end of the file to import environmental variables from the config map to container. Okay, so that's what we have here. All right. Okay. Config map reference, a secret would have been secret map reference, safety key reference. If it was, excuse me, if it were a, ref, a secret, you would do the same thing to reference it in your manifest file. So let's apply those changes by doing this. Okay, so that's been done. Now your application has access to an environmental variable called insights, which has a value of. Um, test all the things all right all right so to verify that the environment environment has the correct value you must gain shell access to your port which means you need the name of your port okay so let's click on that let's run that so that we can get the name of our port and this is the name okay we actually have two ports one is terminating one is running okay at the end it should just be one okay so that's it pops up with a bunch of other things coming behind. So we're going to execute this. So like I said before, copy it directly. Don't use the uh, copy button. If you do, it will run that command as soon as you paste it into the terminal. Oh, I made a mistake there. Let's go back. No, I lost that one. Let me get the pods again. Okay, so that's the name. Let me copy that and then bring up that command we were trying to run previously. Ah. Okay, that one is gone. Okay, so let's do it this way. Uh, again, no, let's let me bring this here, take this back up here. All right, so let me copy this again and then come here, paste it in here, copy the value, the, the name of the pod, and of course, replace it with me. All right. So let's do that. Da, 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 da. Then paste. All right. When you do that, hit enter. All right. The command is deprecated. We should be using the newer command. All right. So let me. Oh, sorry. Let me exit out of there and show you the newer command. Ah, uh, the shell. Where my shell is behaving is. Get into trouble. Okay, so let me try this. Okay, no, I missed that one. Uh -huh. All right, so that should work. Uh -huh. So we just put two dashes between uh, this and the SHA that you're trying to run. Okay, so we're in the pod now. So we're going to execute this. Okay, sorry about that. That's not what we're supposed to do. Print environmental variables. We want to see those environmental variables to set. Sorry about that. Let me return this here. Okay, so I print that. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's look through. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's look through. Credentials. That's one. Okay. All right. Insights. That's another one. Okay, you see they are they are in our container uh, terminal uh, container shell. <laughs> they made available so you can run and you can use them when you run your commands. Okay, so let's exit out of there. Uh, I think I lost my way. Let's go back here. All right, so let's exit out of the pod. And then let's see what's left for us to do. Use mount volumes to consume config. Uh, config maps in um, containers. Okay, so this is a sample of the configuration file we're supposed to be using, um, but this time we're using volumes to do that, to consume. Uh, and then, of course, you can make those volumes available to other parts to use. Okay, so we, we apply. That file has already been provided to us. We apply that change, and then, of course, you get the pods, and we hit that course terminating up and uh, running. One which uh, the old one will be terminated and new one will be, will be created to replace that one. So we do the same thing like we did before. 
Okay, so we copy this. Come here, paste that. And um, I'll assume this would be our. Okay. Paste that in here. Then I hit that and it should go. Wow, okay, so we're all right, so that's it. All right, so now we change into, navigate to the appropriate folder. If you look carefully, change into, it says ETC uh, config. Let's see whether that was specified. Okay, the mount point for that, the volume. Volume, see this, this, this. Okay, config map name, sample base, volume mount, bar. Okay, so that's one of them. See that that was specified in there. So if you look here, that's the same place we are asked to go to to check on that. So that's it there. Copy that, come back here, paste that one, and we're in there. Okay, so we're changing, and then it was supposed to list to see what is there. All right, airspeed when okay. Let's go back and look at so comp it down. Okay, see the key there, see it there. Name Mime. Mime. how do you pronounce that? I don't know. Okay, so that's one. Okay, all right, value from all right, that's great. That worked out. All right, so what's the next thing we're supposed to do? Okay, so let's just they say we should cut the airspeed. Let's cut it. Cut. Oh, okay. So it turns that African or European. All right, that's value. Let's go back to our. Okay. Um, okay. Name. Value from name. PNG. Containers. Mark points. Okay. Okay, so let's quickly round this on up. Okay, so after that, we're supposed to exit and then check. Uh, let's exit out of the pod. Let's clear the screen so we see what we're doing. Then check out. All right, so we're good to go. We completed the tasks. Click on this to see both the scores are fully received. And we did what we needed to do. So that ends our session today for Quick Labs. After that, you just click this button to end the lab. Leave a, a review and click submit. Thank you for watching.